There's plenty happening, mate. But how's the body? How's the preseason been for yourself? No, it's been good, mate. And uh, it's been an interesting one, sort of staying away from the environment for that sort of extra couple of weeks. But it's um, it's been bloody gold, and I feel great. I'm itching to get in there, which is a nice feeling. And um, you know, just really capitalise on the last sort of three weeks to just get that family time in, get my body absolutely hissing, and um, going really fresh for a, for a big year. Was this always part of the plan, as to, to miss those first couple of weeks, uh, knowing that the big year that's ahead of you was? And I know, know you're a real competitor as well, so that would have been a hard, difficult decision to make. It was hard, but then um, the last couple of years have been a little bit up and down with seasons, COVID, and and preparation, and um, you know, with the the year we had last year um, as well, and then just it was in my contract. Too busy to be honest. So I've got one year left. I thought I'd better use it, and uh, I, I fought to get it in there with uh, my agent Warren. And I thought, oh, and I also rung uh, Rito and a couple other players who had done it in the past, and they'd, they'd, they'd talked about how how much gold it was to sort of come in then, um, also, and then just you're really itching. And I'm, I, I was sort of uh, my wife Tegan was like, you should go back to work this week, and. <laughs> <laughs> so I was starting to get a bit itchy and I was watching clips on the thing and I went and watched the boys play the Crusaders in uh, Western and I definitely got the bug and, and the hunger. But um, training-wise, it's been just gold to be able to get my body to a really good place and um, and also be with my kids, do the drop-offs and and um, really fill that tank up. Hey, Ez, you've got a big year coming up, mate. You've got, um, you know, not just the Super Rugby, the the test matches but also the World Cup how are you feeling going into this year? Well, it's hard to um, you know to not talk about you know what's coming at the end of the year and, and how much excitement that draws to you but um, I definitely felt it after last year uh, Kempi and the sort of the last sort of three months of the year for us was a real positive shift in our team and the All Blacks and um, you know besides the last 10 minutes against England we'd sort of you know, won seven in a row and we've got some, you know, awesome coaching staff um, now and Fozzie's got the help he needs and um, I left that tour really excited and rejuvenated about where we're going and, um, and the, you know, the, the, the talent we have in our team and we can put it together and then, um, so that was good to know and then obviously probably a week after the England game, start thinking of the World Cup and what if and, you know, I think, at our All Blacks testing anyway, you could tell a lot of the boys have, didn't have too much of a holiday and have really dug in and there's heaps of PBs flying around and, you know, the edges in the room and the proposition of what's to come is so exciting and, um, you know, I think Super Rugby will be pretty special this year too because you're going to have a whole lot of people trying to put their best foot forward and then also some young guys trying to, you know, make a dream come true. Mate, and that's what it's all about. Like this year, we're going to unearth some talent, and there are some talented players that are playing for the Highlanders. So, so what's your what's your thoughts on on the the Clark Dumity regime that he's got going on at the moment? Are you enjoying Clark and, and the new players that have made the step up? How's the Highlanders squad looking this year? It's it's been good, and I, like, as you've said, I can't really comment deeply on how what the environment's like at the moment. But I've been in and out. Um, the vibe's really good, but also with just with the Highlanders' connection and the way our team operates and sort of around sort of our fun and enjoyment with um, also working really hard is, and having um, Tom Donnelly in as well is really exciting, an ex-Highlander who gets it, um, loves yeah. the region, and, and I think even from pre-season, seeing the boys go down into Southland and um, do a bit of an experience in amongst the, the community, and then also the last four years, the work that Kane and um, Joe Wheeler have been doing with our academy boys is paying off. And a couple of boys have made it through the system. We lost one to the Crusaders, which is OK. And, and then we've also got allowed about five or six young boys from Gore, Southland region um, coming through. So uh, all those little things are paying off. But also picked up a couple of, you know, watching in the weekend, Jonah Lowe was a really exciting pickup we got. And... He showed it in the weekend. And then guys like um, Jonah Nariki and Putty Putty back from injury, you can see they've had a big, big, long layoff in preseason, and they're both hungry men. And 
see what Putty Putty was doing to grown men was pretty scary. And then Jonah Nadeke's <laughs> just class when he's fit. So, um, you know, our 23 we can put out, we, we're going to mix it with, with some teams and try in some respect. And one of those players you, you, you've, you haven't mentioned there, and I've got big raps of him, just from the limited uh, kind of what I've seen from him, is young Cam Miller. Has, has he shown signs and something that you've been really excited about? Probably the 10 position is somewhere where you're, you're looking to really lock down. Is he that player? Man, he's got the potential to be. He's, he's a good kid. He works hard. You know, listens to meetings. You can tell, especially with first fives, they've got so much riding on them as a as a player, right? Like they they are pretty much the quarterback. They run the team. Um, and even last year when he came in, I could see he's got a good hit on him. And um, the moments don't look too big for him. But um, you know, Super Rugby is different, and I'm really excited to see how he goes. And I think the key is is uh, not putting too much pressure on him. But I don't think he takes things too serious in the sense of. You know, I think he knows he's a young man. He works really hard, but I think he knows his game too, which I like. Is he's not trying to be a Richie Mo. He's not trying to be Bodie. He's just he plays his game his way. And um, you know, and obviously, if our with the stadium, with the with the forward pack we've got, we can if we can provide good ball. Nines and tens are only as good as the ball you're getting, really. So um, he's got a huge future. Um, great ideas. He's telling him he's the next Dan Carter. That's just work the treat, I'm sure. But uh, all his mates would have been tagging him and stuff. But uh, hey, that's that footy, you know. And, and if, if, if he's not thinking that in his own mind, then, you know, but sometimes hearing it from other people always helps too. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh, take another step this year. Mate, well, you've um, been around in the Highlanders jersey for a long time. We've talked about this year. What about your next step when you depart to go to Japan and, and link up with Toyota um, the Blitz. Are you excited about that uh, next chapter of your life? Yeah, I am. I, I am excited. It's hard to not think about it sometimes, but it was also, I kind of felt like sort of mid last year, I was just a little bit worried about the future in the sense of I hadn't had anything kind of signed past this year. And, you know, rugby, you know, injuries, you can kind of, if you don't have anything, I've always had contracts locked in a couple of years in advance. So it was a bit scary there for a little bit and, um, you know, not having that security. And then to, um, I rang my old coach, Steve Hansen, and said, hey, mate, um, can you help me out? And, uh, you know, Steve was great and he um, helped sort of make it happen pretty quickly. And then I was able to focus on just playing footy again. And I think the, the worst thing is, that, you know, I went to the, us leaders presented to the team the other day at the Highlanders and um, just walking in the building again was just like this is this year's last time and uh, I'm an emotional person at the best of times but you know it'll be exciting year because I'll be experiencing everything for the last time in a Highlanders jersey not the first and not just another game another derby another trip away it's it's the last so I'm I'm really excited to go on Monday and be like Every day is a chance to just enjoy what it is, enjoy being in the Highlanders, enjoy playing under the roof, enjoy playing at the zoo, and and, and even living in Dunedin. I've been here 13 years, and it's been amazing. <laughs> the city's uh, um, helped me grow as a man, and, and they're good people. And, you know, the the old quote you, you hear when you come down is, the further south you go, the better the people are, and, and it's very true. Mate, Dunedin, you've given us so much enjoyment over the last couple of years, and we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you down under and being able to witness the best ever to do it in the black jersey. And Nug, just, just quickly, your game, mate, like I saw signs last year towards the end of the test season, you really find your feet, your confidence are there, like you scored that unbelievable try over on the tour, and you took on the gaps. Are you happy with where your game's at at the moment? Yeah, I think it's um, last year was a bit of an up and down year. It was like just struggling in the, in the Highlanders jersey with a bit of form, um, and then All Blacks. I oh, in the Super, I hurt my groin, and that kind of stunted my All Black start. And then I, I put that down too. That was like I put a lot of hard work in. I got really fit, and that, and then also like connecting with Joe Smith. Like he was a game changer for me. The way he saw the game, he had clips from trainings. He had clips from games way back he he really just gets rugby and he got my mindset and 
Um, I had a good chat with all three coaches. Actually, my D was playing up a little bit in July, and so I connected. I just sort of had a, as the year went on, I, I really went and got some help around my game and just got a clear sight of what they saw. You know, they were happy, but happy's not good enough. And I went a bit deeper and not assumed I knew what knew the answers, and, and that really helped going on to the tour. So I was able to, um, and in my time, I've sort of learned, you know, you you kind of can get to the end of the year tour and you just want to get it done to get home. And um, so I've always sort of tried to finish strong and I was really happy I was able to get to a point. Um, and, and, you know, you're as good as your last game and um, played okay against England. And if I'd maybe played better, we maybe not a drew a game, but that's, that's the hunger that drives you. And um, it, was, it reaffirmed for me something that I knew is that, you know, if you I always want to keep striving to get better and, why not use the coaches to do that? I don't see everything. And, um, you know, connecting with Joe, Fozzie, and our D coach again, Stormy, um, just really helped fuel my game. And when I've got targets to hit and things to go for and, and clear work on, organic things were happening. Like, Joe wasn't showing me clips of me running. He was just showing me opportunities. He was showing me what other nines had done. And if it's in your brain, you know, it just sort of happens, eh? And things just react and... But if I hadn't gone to get that help, I don't think I would have been able to um, find some form again at the end. So definitely uh, be looking to, you know, keep keep growing my game, keep learning. But also with the World Cup year, not putting the pressure on myself to know I have to perform straight away. It's about building and trying to be consistent. And that's one thing I've always tried to be in my career. Mate, that's the difference between good and great. You know, you never could be happy with what's gone on in the past. You're constantly fine-tuning your game. You're asking for advice, and, and that's why you'll go down as one of the greatest of all time, As uh, We really appreciate you. Just quickly, what do you, what do you got, what's life got planned for, for Azza, you know, as you start winding down a fantastic career? Yeah, that's sort of the – that was a couple of questions that happened about post-Japan, and uh, I'm unsure, bro. I think uh, – I don't know. The, Coromandel? I'm really passionate about <laughs> being the Coromandel for sure up in the um, Hamilton region. Just sort of want to get some good schools for my kids, but um, probably join Tiki Golf, Co- Golf Club. It'll be one of the first priorities <laughs> when I get back and then uh, uh, try get try get enough, uh, my handicap low enough to take some money off you. Um, and... <laughs> I'm really, I don't know, I've been talking to Bailey Mackey and and, uh, and Sky as well around really interested in storytelling or sort of documentary sort of stuff around rugby or, or sport. Um, I'd love to get into that space around, there's so many stories in New Zealand sport that aren't told, comebacks, yeah. wins, losses, people that missed out. And, you know, I love that kind of stuff. So I'd be trying to while I'm in Japan, I'm going to try and start really upskilling and setting that up to try and come back and do that. But um, I'd love to get into some a skill coaching role if possible. Um, I think head coaching or or coaching itself is a um, it's a tough job as we've seen in the last uh, couple of years. <laughs> definitely around the pressure of it, you don't see many skills coaches get fired. So uh, if yeah. I can, uh, <laughs> you know, upskill maybe around definitely around the contact area. I reckon I really enjoy getting in a team environment, staying connected to rugby, but as a more of a low-key role in the sense of I'm there to help with skills um, and, you know, even a bit of mindset stuff. So, But, yeah, it would. Uh, the main priority would definitely be to have a job where I can be there for my boys. And um, yeah. that's one thing that scares me a little bit about coaching is they're probably there longer than, uh, than players. So uh, yeah. I don't want to be a, a, a like a come-and-go dad I'm taking them around the world for a little bit, and then I'm home to be daddy. And uh, or yeah, I'm being called Sir Nappy at the moment, which is the cool new nickname. I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> I'll take it. And uh, so daddy, and if I don't do what he wants, it's Sir Nappy. So yeah, cool. Um, you'll teach you little <laughs> bastard. <laughs> so uh, love them severely, but uh, yeah, man, it's funny how a little three-year-old can really stir you up. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till they get older, mate. They are lippy as anything. My kids are real lippy. Oh. Hey, as I think oh. you'll, you'll you'll be fine getting a job post rugby, mate. You're an absolute personality. You're, you've got a great heart, and uh, you've done a flying job here in New Zealand. We're going to let you go, mate. It's just a quick message for New Zealand. I know we've been going through a uh, tough old time late. Have you got a message for everyone out there struggling? 
Oh, I feel I don't know to everyone in the in the North Island and in, in, in the Hawke's Bay Gisborne region is and the Coromandel. I think it's just been and far north. It's just and my heart goes out to everyone and and even to everyone that's been helping and that it's just. Yeah, it just shows how powerful Kiwis are and willing to help. And then, you know, we'll get through this and um, hang in there and um, just sending lots of loves and thoughts and um, just 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 think of the good things in the day and think of the, be grateful for what we have. And um, and to those that are, have been lost, uh, very sorry to their loved ones and a lot of support and love goes to them. Oh, you're an absolute champion, mate. Loved, loved your call. We've had a message come through. Best chat to date, Nug. Good man from an unknown message. So they're loving your chat, brother. Thanks so much for your time and all the best for the rest of the year. Cheers, boys. Thank you.